This is the self-publishing news for May the 9th, 2022. And boy, it's jack-packed and stacked to the top. I can't get enough of information like this. And if you can't get enough information like this, like I do, then you may want to take a look at my resource, Scribando. Uh, Scribando, it's spelled S-C-R-I-B-A-N-D-O. Make your book a success, as they said. Uh, Albert over there puts together the best information when it comes to self-publishing. And I always kind of feel bad when I take from his newsletter and uh, some of the articles that he's sharing, but I'm not going to share all of them because this is going to give you more of a reason to go ahead and subscribe to Scribando. And I believe they have like a 30-day trial of some sort. If you go over and visit, go over to Scribando.com. I don't have an affiliate. He just gives me free access. So that way I can give you guys some free information. And uh, the really cool thing is there's some really interesting information and some that has me scratching my head. And it's not because of Scribando. Um, so let's go on over here. The very first item in the news is going to be from the Good E-Reader. Uh, this one's put together by Angela Waterfield talking about print sales forecasted to drop in 2022. Now, this is very interesting and it pretty much goes back to like, Hey, 2019 life was normal. 2020 things kind of really took a turn for the worst and then books and book sales exploded. Um, and now they're feeling like, well, now the dust is going to settle. It's not going to return back down to 2019 levels of sales, but they feel it's going to be significantly less than 2021, probably a little closer to 2020 sales, maybe a little less than that. Now, this is what this article says. However, there's a little bit of foreshadowing on this because I found another piece by Publish Drive that actually shows the sales that were made and it was actually better. So I'm not sure if Angela wrote this piece and wasn't aware of what the information Publish Drive has, but either way, got that information. Very next item up here in the news, it comes from Scribando as well. This was kind of cool. When I saw this and I opened up the email newsletter and I clicked on this, I was like, oh, a curated list for self-publishing. What could it be? Yeah, this is my shop I put together. Uh, this is all of the sellers that I currently use. In fact, if you watch my main channel, you'll know that dailinks.com slash list sends you over to my curated list of sellers. These are people I have personally used and can personally endorse and say they are good. They are great at what they do. So you don't have to sit here and go through all of the different reviews and figure out, oh, is this going to be worth it? Am I going to be scammed? Is this going to be really inferior products? No, because over at dailinks.com slash list, you'll be able to get that information. Thank you, Albert. I do appreciate you sharing that link. I was completely unexpected when I clicked on it. I was like, oh, I really wonder what Fiverr. Oh, it's my list. <laughs> All right, next item up in the news. Vellum users should probably be rejoicing. They've been doing a lot of updates lately. And if you're not familiar with Vellum, it is a uh, pretty much a book formatting software. It does it for eBooks as well as print books. It is exclusive to Mac. It's only for Mac. So if you are a PC user, then you're probably not going to have any luck whatsoever. Uh, so uh, any rates, they said main thing that they brought up is Vellum 3.2 is now available with a big change under the hood. They have a new file format. It saves documents in all new format. Vellum documents are now just a single file and no longer use the Max package format. The simple format, it's easier to share your work with colleagues via email or using cloud services like iCloud, Dropbox, and OneDrive. Converting to the new format is automatic and will help and help happen the next time you save your work in vellum and when you save your file your mac will now show the cover on as its icon so there you go that is really cool so if you are vellum users go get that updated and start to work right away all right so aggregate publishers street lib they're always dropping some great information i should be meeting up with their team relatively soon to talk a little bit more about street lib and maybe get them on for an interview 
Um, any rate, they're an aggregate publisher, meaning that they publish on your behalf to other platforms and in exchange, it's uh, so like a revenue share. They take a portion of the profits of sales and you don't have to pay anything for them to distribute. Well, in the coming week, they said, which should be this week, we will release a major update of Street Lib Write, our tool for the production of paperbacks and digital editions. The features we introduced have made the processing of the PDF file of the inside of the book more efficient, as well as the cover of the paper edition. Here's a brief overview of the new developments that you'll find on the platform. Uh, first, the process of generating PDF files for printing is much faster. In the graphic customization section, in addition to the footer, you can now choose to insert the page header. Graphic optimization of the available themes to better convey elements like quotations, hypertextual links, and links to notes, etc., etc. And the creation of the paper cover becomes easier and more intuitive. Uh, so this is really kind of cool. Streetlib Write is 100% free, so any Anybody that's looking for software that they can make their ebook or their print book, this is another option you can probably consider. Do you have to publish a street lib to use it? Not to my knowledge, but it's certainly nice having something that is free that if for some reason you're like, you know, I can't afford Vellum or Atticus or something like that, give this one a shot. All right, speaking of, I was just talking about Atticus, so let's go ahead and talk about the guy behind Atticus, which is Dave Chess and the Kindlepreneur. He actually just launched a new article here about updating or republishing a book. Which one is better? There are sometimes some people are wondering, oh man, I got 10 more pages I have to add to this. Do I republish this or do I update it? And it's not just a clear and cut answer because you would think, oh, okay, well, if it's an ebook, it's 10 extra pages, I'll just update it. That's great. But what about your print book? You're going to run into some issues. And what about reviews? And how do those reviews carry over? These things are discussed in the article with the Kindlepreneur, republish versus updated book. Highly recommend. Get yourself subscribed to the Kindlepreneur's email newsletter so you don't miss out on pieces like this. It's super insightful and gets it to where you make more of an informed decision should this occasion arise for you. Uh, this next one here comes from Amazon of all places. Uh, crazy, right? I'm going to talk about Amazon and, and here, here we are. So <laughs> um, Amazon just recently sent out to their customers. They said, thank you for using the send to Kindle service to send personal documents to your Kindle library. We want to let you know that starting August, 2022, you'll no longer be able to send Mobi files to your library. And that's dot M O B I and dot A Z W. Any Mobi files already in your Kindle library will not be affected by this change. Mobi is an older file format and won't support the newest Kindle features for documents. Any existing Mobi files you want to read with our most up-to-date features for documents will be resent in a compatible file format. Also, compatible formats now include EPUB, which you can send to your library using your same send to Kindle email address. So if you're not aware, you have a Kindle um, or you have you have Kindle e-reader or if you have the app and you're using that, you can actually email yourself your own books. Yeah. And it, they take just about every type of document. I did a whole tutorial video on my main channel. Not sure if it's still up, but uh, if you don't find that, you can always just Google it up and take a look. It's really kind of neat. All that to say this is that they're pretty much no longer supporting Mobi uh, after August 2022. So it's not too much longer. All right. Hey, the next item up in the news comes for the gang over at a book brush. Instant mockups 2.0 is now available. Actually, I'll be talking a little bit about book brush today in the podcast, why it's one of my favorite resources and why I continue to use it, and why it would be absolutely insane that every author wouldn't have free access to this. Like there's just free access. So everyone should have a book brush account. Well, all that to say this, the, this is not in the free version, but it is available to those in the premium users, uh, with instant mockups 2.0, you'll be able to customize every mockup right inside the tool, bulk edit the mockup images, preview each mockup with your book before downloading and add your brand colors, fonts, images with one click of a button. Really cool. Really love it. I don't want to gush too much more about it because I'll be talking more about it in the podcast recording here today. Moving forward here, the gang over at ReadZ uh, has a webinar that's going to be coming out here, actually, and it's called uh, uh, Write a Thought Leadership or How to Write a Thought Leadership Book. 
This is available from Reed Z. If you haven't heard me gush about these guys before, great free resource, another awesome one. But um, any rates you want to build your brand, grow your business, or simplify or simply influence people, if so, you should write a book. And here's how you can do it. So give this one a look. This will be definitely worth your time. It's set for May the 11th at uh, 15 o'clock. That feels weird, me saying that. I'll just say 3 p.m. Uh, all right, and get yourself registered so you don't miss out on that one. All right, next item up in the news, and this is the head scratcher here. This is the thing I was just discussing before because the good e-reader, which is a pretty reputable resource, says the sales are going to be down in 2022. But here on Publishing Perspectives, another pretty good resource here says an Easter surprise in the States, 30 million more books sold than in 2019. Now they don't necessarily address. Is this a drop from 2021 or 2022? It's more focused on, Hey, we've seen growth since 2019. And this is why I'm so perplexed because the one article says, oh, it's going to be down. And here in this article, it says it's up, but it's from 2019, which of course corroborates everything that the other person said, because they said, oh yeah, it's definitely going to be better than 2019, but probably not better than 2020 or 2021. So that one's got me scratching my head. Publish Drive shared this resource. Want to thank them for sure on that one. All right, next up, uh, aggregate publishers. We're just talking about the uh, uh, aggregate publisher. This is Lulu. Lulu's actually putting together, and this is pretty interesting. Low and no content publishing to boost your brand. You're going to find that there's not too many of these self-publishing platforms that are embracing no content and low content book publishing. Uh, why is that? I don't know. It's I think it's still just relatively new to them and everybody's kind of tiptoeing around. In fact, my good friend Keith Wheeler Books just launched a video this past week and he'd shared something very interesting about series in that uh, you can't put any low content books into a series anymore. They just won't allow for you to do that. And I was like, oh, well, when he cited his source, you go to look at it. It's from Amazon KDP. It is the first time they have acknowledged low content book publishing publicly never said anything else in any other article at all so they're finally starting to see it and they're starting to recognize this lulu however has been ahead of the curve for a while they have been encouraging people uh, to do low content publishing they've got so many great resources including like you know the wire bound notebooks those are really neat i like that all right, moving forward here. This one actually comes from the gang over at Publish Drive. Again, it seems like Publish Drive probably greased my palms and got them to uh, get on the news twice. I promise you that wasn't the case. I haven't talked to them in a while, actually. But uh, Publish Drive just announced that. They said, say hi to Lazy Joy, Publish Drive's newest store. Lazy Joy reaches reading apps on major Chinese smartphones like Huawei, Xiaomi, Transen, Oppo, Vivo, and TCL. It's a pretty big network, all to say that. Uh, what to know? Lazy Joy distributes ebook and audiobook formats, so you get two different things that you can send out, plus most genres and languages. If you're already distributing with us, we require no specific action. Sit back and we'll do the rest of the content in the next 15 days for you. If you don't want to distribute to Lazy Joy, just switch it off inside your books. Cool, cool, cool. Excellent. So, all that to say this Publish Drive, another aggregate publisher, the difference that they have with their platform is they don't take any of your revenue at all. There's no revenue share, but you have to pay for a monthly subscription. And it depends on the number of publications that you put through there, be it eBooks, print books, or audiobooks. Uh, I really need to explore Publish Drive a lot more since they've changed that model over the last couple of years. It's definitely something that I've taken notice to because you could probably, I don't know, they, they have you published for like $4.99 per month. That's $4.99. You can do two books, I think is what it is. Might be different. Don't quote me on that price. Uh, but either way, I mean, you could sell one book each at say a $4.99 price point and you've already made your money back. So um, there's just options to kind of consider. I know that there's a rev share. Not everybody can afford a monthly subscription. Just something to kind of think about. Hey, a, a little tip here. And 
I think I probably don't do a good enough job in sharing this here with you is if you are published on Amazon and you are an Amazon published author in some capacity, uh, claim your author central profile, get the Amazon author profile set up because there's this nifty little feature. Thanks to the fine folks over at Ally for pointing this one out. And I think I probably should tell you this because I was like, Oh, I don't say this enough. Did you know you could get readers to follow your author profile on Amazon just like they would on social social media. Yeah. So the next time that you're promoting yourself, one of the things I'd recommend is say, Hey, if you'd like to have more killer content like this, make sure you follow me over on Amazon, provide them your link to the Amazon profile. And the nice thing is, is when you have a book go live, they're going to notify you. Now it's a little delayed sometimes, but better late than never. It's like having free advertising and what better way to get in touch with your readers than having something like this. And if you have an email list, that's totally cool. Take advantage of this because it's kind of like having an email list indirectly. All right. Uh, next item up in the news comes from the folks over at ebook fairs. Uh, they have a bunch of open book fairs. So I'm just going to kind of blaze through them really quick. Let you know, you can go to dailylinks.com slash ebook fairs to get yourself some ac access or just go to ebookfairs.com and just tell them Dale sent you. All right. So the current, uh, uh, fairs that they have right now is Market It 2022 African American Book Publishing Festival. Um, another one's Unique Takes on Common Themes. This is a book fairs for books that offer some new variation on old themes. Uh, the seventh official Roundup Book Fair. This one's put together by Kenny Myers, the guy in charge of ebook fairs. Uh, Laugh, Giggle, and Snort is another one that's available. Bilingual Fun, Romance Only. And lastly, uh, empowering better days. So there are a lot of like book fairs you could take part in. All you have to do is go over to ebookfairs.com and see if it will apply for you. And I don't know that you need to have an account to be part of a fair, but even if you do, I think it's only like $5 per month. So you can always just pay the five bucks to go ahead and get it for the month. Could be completely off on that one here. Uh, I just recommend go to ebookfairs.com. Get yourself set up right away. Those are the items in the news. What did you think about them? Was there anything that I missed over the past week? Let me know inside the comments.